This mini PC has a brand new AMD Ryzen AI processor with 12 cores, 24 threads, a new awesome GPU, and an even bigger AI NPU. And it's done all that while maintaining basically the same size as the previous generation. This is certainly very different, so let's get to it. Hey guys. This is Patrick from STH, and this is a B-Link SCR9. This might be the biggest generational leap in these mini PCs that we've seen in a long time, and I'm gonna show you exactly why. And not to bury the lead here, but the brand new generation of AMD Ryzen AI processors that's in here means that it changes our relationship with the CPU and memory. It changes just how much GPU compute we have. This is actually a much better system if you wanna do gaming and stuff like that than the previous generation, which I have uh, the SCR8 right here, but at the same time, it definitely changes things. And hey, I think a really valid question today is, you know, should you get the SCR8, which is a great previous generation system? Should you get the SCR9, which has a lot of upgrades and that's definitely very cool? Or should you look at getting something like this, which is the new Ultra, that you can go and stick into a dock and create a Frankenstein little mini PC? Now, of course, B-Link is loaning us these units so we can go do this review. So we have to say that it's sponsored. We let companies send us their products so we can do reviews before they launches. But on the other hand, nobody gets to tell us what we say. I do want to say a quick thank you to all the STH YouTube members who make these mini PCs reviews possible. If you do want to help us out, you can join down below. We use those funds to go set up all the testing and stuff that we do on these systems. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, the first thing I just want to show you is uh, these two systems, right? You can see that we have the SER9, we also have the SER8, and uh, if you didn't know any better, these things look almost identical other than maybe the color of the versions that we have. But from a physical footprint size, they're about the same. Okay, so getting to the front of this, we have our power button. Next to that, we have a recessed clear CMOS button. Thank goodness it's not just a giant button like in previous gens. We also have a three and a half millimeter audio jack. And then we have two USB ports. These are both USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We have a Type-C and also a Type-A port. One other feature that's new on the SCR9 versus the SCR8 is you're going to see all these little holes. What these little holes are, are they are microphones and it's an array of microphones that's supposed to use AI technology and make it really good. In practice, it's okay. You can still get some fan noise and stuff like in, in there. So I don't necessarily think it's going to replace, you know, the thousand dollar mic that's sitting right here in, in any way. But uh, on the other hand, you know, I guess they have speakers and microphones now, so that's good. On both sides of this unit, we just have some metal on the top. We have the B-Link logo. But when we get to the rear of this unit, we actually have some new features. First, let's get to the USB ports, and this drives me absolutely nuts, but let me explain what's going on here. The top port on the little stack of type A ports, that is a USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second port like the other one. The other type A ports, the one in the middle and also the one on the bottom of the stack, those are USB 2 ports. And a lot of folks don't know why you still have USB 2 ports. That's a good question. One of the big reasons is just for things like, you know, if you have like a wireless mouse or something like that, they tend to work better on USB 2 ports still. But in terms of high speed USB, you have a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port, and that is another type C port that's in the system. One thing that drives me absolutely nuts is that B-Link does not label these very well. Like, how do I know that that's my awesome USB 4 40 gigabit per second port? Port, whereas the front one is only 10 gigabit per second. I just wish that these things had clear labels so that way it was easy to know what it is. If you didn't watch this video or look up the specs or something like that, it would just be a total pain. So please be link to start labeling them. For wired networking, we have a two and a half gig ethernet port, but we only have one. We then have our HDMI and display ports for additional video output. And finally, we have our DC power input, which uses a standard barrel jack and it takes a 19 volt input. And we have to start talking about that again because the GTI 12 system that we're showing here, this actually has an internal power supply. Now you can see the impact of that is that, you know, this is a much, much larger system, but on the flip side, it does finally have an internal power supply. And that's not something that you get in the SCR9. On the bottom, you get something that is very B-Link. You get these giant rubber feet. And then under the little covers that you would have here, you have four screws and that's how you get inside. Now, taking off our four screws allows you to get inside the system and you're going to see two new features or two new-ish features. The first one is uh, something we've seen before, but that's the dust filter that covers this on the inside. I guess the B-Link folks thought it was a good idea to put a dust filter here, but on the flip side, you have to use four screws to get the bottom plastic cover off 
And then to get the dust filter off, you need another two. It's just a total pain to service this thing. The other interesting thing though, is that this also has internal speakers. That GTI 12 that I just showed you also has internal speakers. If you read the B-Link marketing materials, they make it sound like this is some kind of like awesome, you know, must have audio feature. It actually seems like B-Link put a lot of thought and effort into putting these little speakers in, but I wish that they didn't. I just don't really see a lot of value in having them. I'd rather have headphones or external speakers that will actually sound decent. I don't even know if this is better than a lot of monitors like built-in speakers at this point. So uh, I just, that's just a feature that I wish we didn't have. Now under that dust cover, we have something that's new and something that's a little different. Okay, so opening up the system, I'm just gonna leave this kind of connected so you can see this is what the back of these speakers look like, but this is the system and you're gonna notice something kind of immediately that's very different here. Um, the first thing of course is the fact that this has the new through hole design that we saw also on the SER8. So the SER9 has that and we also see that on that GTI 12. Um, it's just kind of a new design where they have different PCBs and stuff in the system. I actually really like what B-Link is doing with that. There's also the heat sink that goes on the SSDs. So you don't have like SSDs throttle like crazy when you fire them up anymore. And you have two 2280 or 80 millimeter M.2 slots. So you can definitely go put two, uh, two SSDs in here if you want. Our system came with a one terabyte SSD that I just wish was a two terabyte drive. Now, of course you could go put a larger SSD in the second slot, but I just kind of wish that this thing was a two terabyte drive to begin with. And let me just kind of also show you this other thing that's in here, which is our Wi-Fi card. This is a Intel AX200, which means this is only a Wi-Fi 6 solution. I hate to say it, but in a system that costs around $1,000, I think you need to have at least Wi-Fi 6E, if not Wi-Fi 7 these days. But opening this up also brings us to our next point, which is there's something that is clearly not here, and that is SODIMS. Instead of having two DDR5 SODIMs that we've seen for plenty of generations now, instead the memory is built into the CPU package. So the AMD Ryzen AI 9 HX370, that is a mouthful of a name, has 32 gigabytes of memory built in. The memory is LPDDR5X at 7,500 mega transfers per second. So that faster memory helps in a number of different ways. First off, of course, faster memory is always good, but it really helps when you have an iGPU. The iGPU in this is the AMD RDNA three and a half graphics. We'll talk a little bit about the performance in a little bit, but the faster GPU plus having more memory bandwidth to feed that GPU actually does really, really well. The other thing though, is that this is a 12 core, 24 thread processor. All these of course have SMT, so we have 12 cores and 24 threads. They all use the Zen 5 instruction set. However, the Zen 5C cores are designed really for kind of offloading like throughput, but more power efficient like throughput tasks. Whereas the Zen 5 cores are the performance cores that are the high-end ones that are kind of gonna give you that maximum single thread performance. In addition to all that compute resource, AMD also increased the tops of its NPU. So we have our brand new like 50 tops NPU, which is not too bad. And as we start to see, you know, Microsoft and others introduce more AI features into desktops, having these NPUs be able to do efficiently, or at least efficiently offload tasks, I think is gonna be a big deal. And of course, in future generations, having a faster NPU is gonna be a big competitive thing. So I think that in future generations, we're just gonna see faster and faster NPU. So 50 is really good for today, but it's not necessarily anything like we're gonna see in a couple of years. Okay, so let's talk about the performance here. We already kind of talked a little bit about the fact that we have a higher tops NPU, but I think the CPU performance is something that we really need to talk about. Okay, so the CPU has four Zen 5 cores and eight Zen 5C cores. Those all work relatively seamlessly and we do get more performance than we got in previous generations, but this isn't necessarily like some kind of giant, like, you know, we're not getting like twice the CPU performance or 50% more CPU performance. It's, you know, maybe five, 10, 15%, something like that. So it's a good gain. It's not like a huge gain. Where we do get a huge gain though is in the AMD Radeon 890M graphics that are built into this thing that are absolutely awesome. In esports titles where we're getting 60 FPS and like 4K, now we're getting like 80 to 90 FPS. So things like League of Legends run really well. Uh, also, if you want to run like Counter-Strike or, you know, other things that are like esports titles, this thing is absolutely awesome. And I just want to talk about the Geekbench numbers real quick because I think there's something really interesting that we just kind of saw, right? So this is the uh, GTI 12, so the B-Link GTI 12. This has the Intel Core i9, 
12900H processor in it, and you know Intel Xe graphics. So when we ran the Geekbench GPU compute on this, I think we got some like 16,000 or so as a score. Then what we did was we used this external dock. This has a little uh, PCIe slot on the back, and uh, you know we just kind of slotted it in here, kind of like we're doing right now. There we go. And uh, here we have the AMD Radeon Pro W7700. This thing in this configuration gets us just over 100,000. So that's a massive jump in terms of GPU performance. This gets somewhere in the 44,000 range. So about half of what this entire setup uh, you know, it gets, th this thing's getting without having a GPU, it doesn't have this weird dock thing and all that, it, it has it all built in, which is kind of nice. And if we were comparing that to either an Intel Meteor Lake or a 780M AMD Ry Radeon graphics, which would have been the previous generation, those would be maybe 32, 33,000. So it's also a very nice jump of over a third compared to the previous gen just on that. And so, yeah, this thing just has an awesome integrated GPU. But with that, let's talk about the power consumption real quick. In terms of power consumption and noise, this thing is awesome. At idle in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, we're getting maybe 35, 36 dBA, which is pretty darn good. And then when we are running it now, where we've been running a stress test on it for about 10, 11 minutes, we're hearing you know maybe about 40 dBA in our 34 dBA noise floor studio. So that's pretty darn awesome for a 100% load that's just kind of pegging the CPU. Now, in terms of power consumption, that's also pretty good. We're seeing idle in that seven to nine watt range, and it jumps a little bit with Windows, of course, but on the other hand, I think that's pretty normal for most mini PCs these days. The really cool thing though, is that you can see that we have this thing just pegged, all cores pegged, and what we're getting out of it is about 76 to 78 watts at the wall, of course, which is still pretty darn good. Many mini PCs will go and run at that maximum performance for a short amount of time, but then you're gonna see that they kind of ratchet it back a little bit after 15 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, whatever it is. And this thing is just running at its full speed, 100%, and it has no qualms about it. So in terms of what the B-Link folks did here to get a system that number one, can hold the high power consumption for a long period of time, I think that's great. And the other thing that's great is that they're doing that without necessarily making just crazy noise out of this little box. It's certainly not silent. I can hear it as I'm speaking right now, but on the other hand, at like 40 dBA running at 100%, like, you know, that's pretty darn good. Now you might be wondering about some of the other things that you're seeing here on set. The first thing you're gonna see is that we have the LTT Precision Screwdriver set in the Serve the Home Edition. We have a special version that they sent. And the reason that's here is because we were looking for something that could hit the little clear CMOS button. I think that someone, that might've been me, might've managed to put a BIOS setting that we didn't want. And so we had to use a clear CMOS button when we were putting it on the set. And when we did that, uh, we needed something small to be able to get in and hit that clear CMOS button. And uh, we actually just used the, I think, T2 bit or something like that in the Precision Screwdriver set. And the other one we have over here is the Ultra System. The one thing I do really like about that is the uh, the power supply is internal, right? So this, you don't really have to deal with. The idle on just the system itself is pretty similar to the other one. But overall, this is a pretty cool box. And then you put it into the GPU dock, which we have here. So we tried it both with the AMD Radeon Pro W7700, as well as the RTX 4070 Super, and they both worked no problem. So I think if you just want to get more expandability, you want more memory, you want more you know, GPU and stuff like that, this is a good solution. But of course, uh, while the base unit is pretty similar in terms of power consumption, kind of in the same range or so, uh, I would definitely say that adding the GPU, of course, adds a ton more power. So we're just gonna put that out here. Okay, for all these videos, I like to have a key lessons learned section. And for this one, the key lessons learned is the three Ps, performance, price, and packaging. From an integrated GPU perspective, the AMD 370 is absolutely awesome. This is a pretty huge jump in graphics. And if you have something like a, I don't know, NVIDIA GeForce RTX price 1650 Ti or somewhere in that range, uh, you're probably getting about that much performance in an integrated solution now, which is 
frankly awesome. There are a lot of games that you can play, no problem on that. And getting 30 to 50% more performance from the iGPU, I think is probably the number one reason that I would recommend this particular system because it's all kind of integrated, right? I think if you were to go back to the SCR8, you know, I think the advantage of that one is that number one, it's way less expensive, but number two, it also has expandable memory. The SCR8 with the same 32 gig, one terabyte configuration is like 649, which is about $350 less than the new SCR9. So, I mean, it's pretty hard not to overlook like a 50% plus increase in price. And the other side to it is that you could get 90 six gigabytes of memory in the SCR8, whereas you're stuck with 32, albeit faster on package memory with the SCR9. And the other thing about that thousand dollar price is that when you look at the GTI 12 with the external dock that we have here, which has an included, you know, internal power supply on that, you also have an internal power supply in here. You have dual NICs, all those kind of things. Um, you know, this this whole bundle is $738, and then you would also have $260 to go put towards a GPU and potentially get better GPU performance than you'd have here. Plus, you have other features like dual NICs and all that kind of stuff too. So, like to me, um, the pricing is probably my biggest challenge with this one. If it were like $799 probably a home run, 700 bucks. Uh, yeah, definitely I would say get this one, but kind of where it is now, it's not as expandable and it also costs a lot, but the nice thing is you get all the integration. And of course, the other thing is that you get lower power by having it all integrated versus having discrete components. But on the other hand, for a package that's this big, this might be the best AMD system that's out there right now. But of course, I'd like to hear what you guys think and what you think is the best. I've kind of talked about all these, but love to hear what you guys think. Also, if you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.